<laughs> Welcome to Retro Bassin. I'm just getting on a lake bass drop with a couple of my bassin buds. Of course, we've got a musician that needs no introduction. And also, we've got Cam from Midland. <laughs> 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 um, I'm out here with uh, Bass and Bud Tom, you have to laugh uh, <laughs> who apparently is, is this Jacksonville chic? What are you wearing, buddy? Uh, I was calling it the Jacksonville Special. In honor of your <laughs> impending move to Florida, I wanted to make sure you felt at home in the future. So, uh, yeah, Tom is uh, wearing cut-off jean shorts and a cut-off retro Bass and shirt, which, by the way, is uh, not stock. We've also got Cam with us, the bass player from Midland. Just like me, Cam has an affinity for, we'll say, the old school uh, things in life. And today we are going to try to get Cam a retro bass and bass on Lake Decker. All right. You totally Sweet. said bass drop before. Wait, did I? You totally did. I feel like every time I do that, I, I think I'm on Which bass. Which is a good bit because you could say no. Bass nope. drop in your mind, man. You could say no. Nope, Lake Decker. Do it again. It's great. No, he said Lake Decker. You sure? At the end. Did I say bass drop? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. That's the worst show ever. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. So last time we were on Decker Lake, we did pretty good with some topwater frogs, and Ken Carey over at the Banjo Minnow sent me these. Uh, the re-release of the OG Banjo Frog. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh, 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 he oh, 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 Come in, go, get him. Drop right over his head. Oh, wow, that was close. Our drift is definitely uh, slowed down, uh, hiding well, behind we're that. Behind this, yeah, yeah. This point. hiding behind Kinda that point. Nice, right? No, this isn't bad. We'll keep working this. We'll get a, we'll get a fish. Or uh, we'll just clear out every reed in Lake Decker. Well, I'm working for you. <laughs> So our top water bites seem to dry up a little bit, and by dry up, I mean it never really started. So we're switching these guys to a couple of different worms. We're gonna hook up Cam with an old school motor oil jelly worm. Here you go, Cam. Yeah, it's, it's weedless, so it will drag, but it'll... Oh, got a fish. Hey, oh. Yeah. oh my goodness. Do you need a net? You know, I'm just gonna probably retro this thing at the boat and hopefully not screw it up. We might oh that's a nice fish. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, give me your pole. I'll oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't I don't know. I don't know gonna, what I'm there doing. you go, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Oh my right. goodness, I was bass. doing my best to botch that. Oh my goodness. That's an eight pounder. That is not an eight pounder, an eight pounder. but that's a nice fish. <laughs> Dude, we, I saw the leg drop two inches when you pulled that out. Oh, oh, man. Look at that. Feed your family for a week. Nice little bass. Dude, I was literally doing my best to lose him. Power oh my bass, goodness. Baby. So I've also got a, a motor oil jelly worm on. <laughs> I was actually just reeling in and that line started moving and there we go, nice little bass. Um, <laughs> give it a smooch. Give it a smooch. Give it a smooch, boy. Just give it a smooch? Give it a smooch. Oh, Salt. No, no. <laughs> there we go. All right, Cam, so you got a Uncle Rico style time machine. What year do you go back to? The That's visit. A great question. Uh, I'm going back to the 50s. The 50s? Yeah. I would have picked like 72 for you. 50s. I mean, that would have been a great time to just be around. Um, and, you know, being... Whoa, I'm sorry. It's the same fish. <laughs> it's the same fish. It's the same fucking guy. All right, see, cast on. up there. <laughs> cast up that way. <laughs> All right, so the 50s? I think the 50s were the, the post-World War II. We are in a boom. Everyone's, you know making babies it's the idyllic american dream i don't know it seemed like the la like the end of 
um, of the innocence of America in a lot of ways. Um, I like the 50s. I think the music is kind of happening. I was about to say, culturally, though, like, all the good stuff's about to come. Yeah, I mean, the 60s were radical, but, like, there's a lot of bullshit in the 60s, too, man. Ah. And the 70s was, like, the the real, like, death rattle of, of, yeah. of all that idyllic 1960s mm. stuff. Although, my favorite music era... Without a doubt, late 70s. Like, it brought yeah. me into 77, 78. Oh, I think we're good, dude. What you have you punk about? rock, okay. rock and yeah, roll. You've rock. got the beginnings of what will end up being hip hop. You've still got, like, um, you know, you've got the golden age of uh, really great country music. Yeah. All right, so yeah, top five country albums. Oh, shit. All right, well, uh, Willie Nelson, Stardust. Stardust, so okay. Oh, okay. Got, it's undeniable. Yeah. Listen to it any time of day. Nice. Oh, nice cast. Shit. No, that's great. That's no, great. What I do with that's Stardust. perfect. I do this. I've done this recently. Night swimming. You put it on. You don't turn any lights on in the pool. If I you have like that. a nice clear night where it's starry Ooh, as beautiful. all get out, you beautiful. just float. I've done. I do that once a summer at least. And you listen to Stardust? Front to back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So the DNA of album. Stardust is incredible. So you've got... Um, um, Booker T yeah. is, is his collaborator on this album. Do you got a fish? No. Oh, ooh. Uh, um, yeah, no, is he he makes one. it. Bef- this is the. It was the album that put Willie Nelson on the map, and he was a great songwriter, but not really. Um, he wasn't considered, you know, his own man. Really, he was doing shit in Austin and he had left Nashville for greener pastures and was starting to really curate that hippie redneck thing hippie yep. country dude and Stardust just doing Hoagie Carmichael standards yeah just beautiful arrangements so that's my number one okay that's a goodie but it's, uh, what's number two <laughs> or two through four uh Let's go Dwight Yoakam, Guitars Cadillacs. Ooh, so newer, newer than I thought you'd go, actually. That's wild, For okay. Sure. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, great Dwight album, great album. Um, we got a chance to play a bunch of shows with Dwight. He was one of the first guys that took us out. We went out with Willie, too, a couple times. We got to play with our heroes, man. And That's right. They don't, they don't come up short. That's right. Uh, Waylon Jennings. There's a bunch of them. I know, you gotta pick one. Me and Mark, the singer and, and one of my best buds ever, he's the one that turned me on to Whalen. Oh, almost fell out of the boat again. No, man, I got great I'm, there, There's fish in here, by the way, I'm getting hit. Like, there's, we're gonna catch a fish. I like dreaming my dreams. Oh, okay, nice. But that whole old Whalen, like that, that era, like it's kind of interchangeable for me. Sure. Now, as a bonus, um, album i will say i just got into 80s whalen which yes. no one wants to talk about and he's got an album called uh, never could toe the line okay and it's like one is that, that like you, after the wolf it's it's 83 okay that is later whalen think. yeah and it's it's all like one four five beam bomb beam bomb tuba bass but yeah but but dude He's got raunchiest lyrics that he's ever written, <laughs> and like he can't sing as well on that album. Okay. I don't know why he must have been going through something because certainly sang after that. Well. Sure. Um, so I got Whalen, we got Dwight. W- Willie Whalen and Dwight so far. Two more um, spots. I've got one in my brain. If you don't name it, we're, we might we might be over. Uh oh. Homie. I mean, I still love you. Ray Charles. Ooh, that's great. Um, the first one, volume one. Uh, country West. Um, wow. Sounds of country western music. So, volume meta one. modern sounds. They're modern, modern sounds, sounds of country, country music, West. volume one. Yes. That's the one. The red cover. Yes. That is a perfect album. Ooh. That's not the one in my mind, but I love that you picked that. That's great. So that's four. That is four. The last one. This is it. You've got one. Oh man. Fuck. <laughs> I would be. Oh, let me see that guy. 
Oh man, this is tough, dude. Because you got when you get leg. it wrong and I say it, you're gonna jump off the boat like it's over. I can't really? wait. I can't yes. wait to hear what it is. There you go. You good? I feel like I'm definitely missing and something. You are. Huh? I'm gonna say it, and you're you're gonna be so mad. Huh? I mean, we're not calling John Prime Country, are we? I thought about that because John. No, I mean. Folk. No. Yeah, yeah, that's not what's in my brain. Okay. <laughs> but the first John Prine album is perfect. Love it. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, you get you get to give it to Tom. <laughs> you want to defer? I gotta go. Let me. Man. The first four is so easy because you have so much room and space. Five sucks. Now that you got one, well, one left, you're like, I was the hardest one to pick. That was the closest anyone's ever been to getting hooked on retro. <laughs> it was. Oh, dude, I was right. that <laughs> yeah, I knew I was back there too. We're good. We're good. Uh, man, I actually, I'm gonna wait to say five. Okay. Right, you ready? You yeah, ready for you it? Go, it's yeah. the L.A. to Miami album, the Keith Whitley album. Oh yeah. With the phone booth, yeah. where she's Myron through the phone booth. Okay. That album's perfect. Let's go. I love Keith Whitley. Why? Didn't yeah, that's great. Interesting, album. okay. Those right. songs are dope. Right. So when you guys started Midland, was it baked? Like, did you have the vision right out of the gates, or did it morph? Something happened in the Oh. Um, it started, it was pretty baked, man. What? It was pretty baked. We, from, from like, just basically the, the sort of musical influences, the style, the, the, the clothes. <laughs> the clothes came a little bit later, but we had the we had the advantage of starting Midland in our thirties. Um. I was in my twenties, so and I had already been in ten bands. You know, I started my first bands when I was in sixth grade, so I knew. You, I was already out of my 20s and out of that, like, we're going to change the world, mm. this band's going to be anarchistic, and, you know, I put in all my, what I thought was a lot of hours into figuring out what I didn't want to do, and, the, and I think the same thing goes for Jess and Mark, so we went and recorded demos first, before even sitting in a garage or a rehearsal space. Oh, wow. And, and I had been in a band with both those guys separately. So I was the common denominator. And the music that we brought there was really, I just killed a fish. <laughs> it's one way. Was, was really special and had that music not been special and, and the experience of recording it so memorable, I don't think we would have, you know, gone all in on the band, but it is what it is. We released that music called the Sonic Ranch during um, COVID. Okay. Oh, that was the W. Garza thing. Yeah. Hell yeah. But we, we knew what we wanted to do. The first music was more like, like Burrito Brothers, Birds, mm. Country, California Country, like Jimmy Yeah, Lee, okay. Like Sweetheart of the Rodeo. And then it, it, it morphed into like, we really got serious about our harmonies and then the songwriting got better and better the more we wrote together and visited Nashville and found people that knew what we like understood uh -huh. us. Ah, uh, okay. And it turned into more of like a hybrid Gary Stewart like, via All right. <laughs> George Strait with the Eagles harmonies, like attempt. That was our whole drinking story. problem a little a little nod to drinking thing. It wasn't intentionally, no. Um, but it's a nod. I heard that on the way here, by the way, on Outlaw Country. I was like, ooh. It's a nod to Gary Stewart um, and like Whiskey Trip and uh, Empty Glass and She's Acting Single. Like yep. all that stuff. Like, I don't know. There's something very unique about Gary Stewart's. Um, I know a lot of guys played music. piano, but he was different. I don't know what it was. It was he just played a guitar, too. So he was like, I, I, also there was a, a bunch of, we got to see Dale Watson a bunch when we were like first starting out here. And of course we got way into like the Gonzo mm -hmm. thing. And so, you know, Jerry Jeff and uh, Dwight was a huge influence. That was my entry into country because I didn't grow up in country music. So like 
I heard Dwight, and I was like, oh, well, this is the, I, I understand how to thread this stuff together so it makes sense for me it, when I was in my early time. Ooh, that Bakersfield uh, influence, yeah, that huh? Bakersfield yeah, sound. And when I met Mark, he turned me on to a lot of that stuff. And this was, you know, I, I had known Mark for ten, eight years before we even started Midland, so. There's a little lake east of town, headed that way, hammered down. The water calls on me from time to time. The phone turned off, music cranked, put the boat in the lake. Start her up, I know I'll be all right. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Dragon line and doing fine. Sunshine time, tackle box and some fish and twine. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Here's to ripping lips, not breaking tips or falling out of the boat. Here we go. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Don't go in there. You don't go in there. Come. Wait, bake it. Look at that. Come on, Tom. Ball. Where are you at? Got him. Oh. <laughs> yes, good job, dude. Yeah, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Single hooked him. Single hooked him. Double hooked him. At the buzzer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. At the buzzer, at the baby. buzzer. That's it. <laughs> Nobody. See him. There's a fish. <laughs> Got him right there. Jerry Reed the fish. Jerry Reed. Do, do it. Kiss do it. it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's a power line. Do fish. it. Do it. <laughs> He's going in. See you, bud. Go on. Go on. Back into the depths. You should have worn that all day, dude. You should have worn that all day. <laughs> so Cam, how jealous of this jacket are you? Oh, you son of a That's right. I would wear that in a 120 degree heat. It doesn't breathe at all. It doesn't breathe <laughs> at all. It doesn't breathe. Is he going to find out? All right. Wait, Is Cam Duddy about to find out? No, you guys. Is that why you acted weird? <laughs> yeah, that's not right. Of course I'm acting weird. <laughs> we're acting no, right before. We're weird. Oh, Even course. earlier. Yeah. I'm a terrible actor. <laughs> I had no, to, you're not. You're a great actor. I had to quit early. <laughs> Cam, doesn't breathe, but wow. It does it not breathe. Goes, yeah, the whole... In commemoration what? of catching your first retro bass. No! Bass. Dude! OG what? trucker hat. And oh, <laughs> your on, very own blue rayon jacket. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh man, and, that's and, awesome. and, and that is not gonna breathe at all. No, man. <laughs> no we don't want it you, to breathe. He's gonna play that for like wearing that for like half a song. Like, no, I can't. Brother, I'm wearing that on stage, no question. <laughs> and a large retro basket shirt. Oh man, and it's insulated. Oh, it is. Ins oh, it is insulated for oh, all yeah. the wrong reasons. Great, guys. Yeah. I'm sweating so hard. Oh, you are. You've been wearing it for like 30 seconds. Hey, retro basket. <laughs> so good. The one and only. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.